as I was growing up, my Jesuit mentors, both in high school, like Father Ramon Mores, and then later on um, in college, Father Fritz Araneta, and uh, in history, I had Father De La Costa. I was very privileged to have great Jesuits kind of helping us, mentoring us, showing us you know, how vast this country is and that we could make a difference in this part of the world. And I became part of a movement that was called Lakas Diwa, which is a militant, nonviolent organization uh, that tried to support the causes espoused by farmers and workers and the urban poor, the youth. So when I, uh, when I was working with, with, with Amnesty International, in a sense, I, I was coming from real experience of people whose rights were violated, where there were people who were imprisoned or tortured, even among my students from La Castiwa. And, 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 and therefore, for me, human rights was not an abstract idea. It was flesh and blood. What I remember uh, very clearly, and I think it will always stick in my mind, no? were the times we were together in uh, uh, protesting uh, the declaration of martial law, no? and then uh, the dictatorship that it uh, brought uh, and then uh, in the 1980s uh, I recall that uh, we joined the Lakbayan. No? This was a uh, march from uh, uh, San Pablo uh, uh, City and uh, to Manila and it took about seven uh, days. When I was in the Senate, uh, I was uh, a member of the Committee on Peace and Unification, and then of the Committee on Justice and Human Rights. No? So I became part of the uh, National Unification Commission, uh, chaired by the late Heidi Yorak. No? And so, help, so Ed helped me uh, in this uh, work, no? we came out with uh, the recommendation that something really had to be done with regard to poverty no? and economic inequity. No? Uh, re also regarding uh, acts of injustices or abuses by those in government. I was uh, privileged to have been a part of the 1986 Constitutional Commission. And I focused my work in, uh, during that period, post-dictatorial period, precisely in the protection of human rights and the importance of pursuing social justice. In, in the work we did uh, in the Philippines and also in other parts of the globe, it was very important to, to demonstrate that there can be no peace unless there is respect for human rights. When I was with International Alert in Colombia, we, we, we supported the formation of a people's movement for peace. And here is where I learned one of the biggest lessons in peacemaking, which is meterle pueblo al proceso. Put people at the heart of the process. You know, I went to a jail and where the indigenous leaders uh, were, were in fact held. And one of them had bullet wounds in the flesh. So I, I, I asked him, Todavía tiene sentido su lucha? Is there meaning in your struggle still? And he said to me, which became for me a very, another important lesson, Aún amanece en la noche más oscura. Dawn comes even after darkest night. In other words, these people who worked so hard, who suffered in the flesh, still did not surrender hope. I worked with the bishops, uh, the bishops of Burundi. Uh, so I went to every single diocese in Burundi, in Gozi, uh, uh, Gitega, Bujumbura, Ruigi. At one time, I saw 367 bodies in one chapel, you know, in the outlying area of Kigali, and, and therefore. I saw how there was so much hatred and vengeance, and yet what, to, what you had to bring there was some kind of 
healing and reconciliation you know, between Hutus and Tutsis. And, and, and this, for me, required moral courage you know, for the religious leaders in Burundi to stand up and say, it is time to heal the wounds of war. One, one significant uh, area where I found a real important ground for work for peace is really Asia. In Sri Lanka, we work with Buddhist monks, with Hindu priests, with Catholic priests and Christian pastors, and again, trying to build a kind of a unified position regarding the peace negotiations in the process. I have been involved in peace work, especially in, in dealing with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, with the Communist Party of the Philippines, for nearly three decades, would you believe? And that's why I say, Peacemaking requires a marathon mentality. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen immediately. It spans decades. The work of many hands, of several generations. What can we learn from Ed Garcia in the face of a lot of challenges uh, in the peace building front here in the Philippines, both in the case of the Bangsamoro and in the case of the communist insurgency. I think, you know, Ed's dedication to honesty and openness to the to the other. Things will not move if you start do not start listening to the other. Second, really, his marathon mentality. People cannot simply just, you know, um, stop pushing for this peace process. Third, a very strong commitment to evidence, which means that he will try to find out what the real facts are. Fourth, I think, you know, something in his Christian background, he's a very kind fellow. No? Uh, only one description, mabuting tao. See it? Yung panghuli, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung ability niya na, yung to inspire. Kailangan natin si Ed Para maniwala pa tayo muli. I'd also like to mention that uh, one important thing that he helped us do was to help build a, a younger generation of peace builders. He urged the young people to form a coalition and this coalition uh, was formed uh, named Generation Peace. So he from he has been there in the first conference inspiring them. I think uh... Uh, because of his uh, involvement in the work for peace in our country, he has helped in uh, keeping <laughs> the process no, alive no, through a negotiated political settlement. No. His life has been uh, uh, devoted no, or dedicated no, to the promotion of social justice, peace, no? and uh, human rights. No? And so, I can say uh, Ed has really been serving his people, his country, and he has been a man for others. Peacemaking, just peace, requires a marathon mentality. It cannot be done by one generation alone. In fact, perhaps our generation has failed, and therefore a new generation has to take on the task. Now, sometimes the work, in fact, is like the myth of Sisyphus. When you think you're nearly there, then you go back to square one. And the young people have to have the courage, the stamina, you know, uh, to be able to, to carry that boulder up, to be able to continue that race. And therefore, the young people must take on this mantra you know, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. To be able to, to pursue their dream. And their dream must be bigger than themselves, you know to dream about this nation, to dream about their community, to dream about building a better country for their children. As Pepa Diokna used to say, to have a nation worthy of our children.